so folks, what I have for you is frankly disturbing footage of Donald Trump. It is two separate interviews, two separate videos of Trump. The first is him just regular bonkers. And we're going to go through that because you start to see the signs of his mental breakdown and his physical breakdown where he's doing an interview and he sounds worse than he usually does. But it's not as awful in the second clip, because what I have for you is Trump having a medical episode, not too dissimilar from what happened to Mitch McConnell. Very strokey, very slurry. It set the internet ablaze just moments ago as this video came out. And it's really troubling to see. And it's a sign that for all his bluster about weak Joe Biden, it's Donald Trump whose brain and body won't make it past 2024. So hit the like and subscribe button. Let's start with the regular interview because it's one of the most bootlicky interviews you're ever going to see. And Trump still still sounds terrible during it. First, he's jealous of Biden's record. I want to play a sound. Here's Biden attacking you. When I took office, the pandemic was raging and our economy was reeling. Are you taking blame for inflation? No. Why not? Because it was already there when I got here, man. Remember what the economy was like when I got here? Jobs were hemorrhaging. Inflation was rising. We weren't manufacturing a damn thing here. What do you make of that? Untruths? I mean, yeah. I could call it another word, but after all. It's a disgrace. We had the greatest economy in history. We then got hit by the pandemic. And then all the jobs were coming back, and we had them back. All of those jobs that we created at a level that nobody's ever seen before, they were all coming back. They were pouring back. You know, it's 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 absolutely insane. Look, I understand that when Bi- like when Biden makes the claim of the job, his record job numbers, I, we have to all admit, even though we certainly support Biden more than we do Trump, that part of that was, well, you know, I, I, when, once the shutdown stopped, people were going to go back to work and things were going to pick up again. People were going to start traveling. The numbers were going to go up. That's true. So Biden did benefit in the sense that anybody who was president after the lockdowns would see a bump. But there's no guarantee that would have been sustained or it would have been nearly as strong or as consistent or as widespread as it was under Biden. And I think there's reason to believe that Donald Trump, if he would have opened too early, if he wouldn't have done it so responsibly, yes, would have seen an uptick, but wouldn't see nearly the sustainability of the uptick. The United States, look, um, has been one of the better countries coming out of the pandemic on, on the raw economic interests. Still a deeply unequal country, still a deeply unjust country. I think we can all admit that. But but the, the recovery was relatively effective and Trump can't handle that. So that's him at his best here. And we're going to get to the strokey thing later on. But here is him basically saying God gives us all the water. So why do we have to need to conserve? And they're taking our appliances away. Well, they're they're taking our sh- big showers, thing. heaters. I, yeah. it, it's, it's all in the name of climate change. Yeah. Which, so you remember when we were having a discussion about it, they sell, if you buy a new house, you have water that doesn't even come out. Even if you're in an area that most of the country has plenty of water called rain from heaven. You know, it comes right from heaven. Beautiful rain. You don't know what to do. Some places have so much you don't know what to do. With. And yet they have restrictors on the showers mm-hmm. and the sinks mm-hmm. and on washing machines where they don't give enough any water. They're giving like this much water. They show me in a glass. They would come to complain about it. And I totally freed it up. Washing machines, dishwashers, dishwashers. They give you this much water. Mm. And the guy's explaining it from different companies in Ohio, which have become very successful because of what we did. You know, we put. That is like 1980s Reaganite. We don't need to do anything about the climate because the rapture is coming. And so, you know, God is going to raise up the righteous in the next 20 years. So why do we need to plan for any sort of climate future? It's insane. First of all, water conservation matters everywhere. And much of the country doesn't have enough water. So this idea that like, oh, we can, God just gives us everything we need is like, well, yes, God has, you know, if you're a Christian, if you're a a believer, you, you know, God gave us a plan it that if we treat it right gives us everything we need and more but doesn't mean we can be a-holes with it either you have to be good stewards of the planet 
and 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 Trump certainly isn't. And he goes on again with this water insanity. And listen, because his voice is slurring a little bit and his face is a little weird. That'll come out in the strokey part later on. You know what you do? You wash your hands four times longer. You take a shower like you have beautiful hair like this. Beautiful. <laughs> and, you, and Larry, I want to get out of there. I want to take a shower yes, and wash sir. my hair. And th you have these things that where the water just drips out. It could hardly come out. You, it's brutal. And guys, he continues on with this. Like you know, it, it you you get to see this part here where Trump. You know, it's just an example of how he doesn't have any real policy. He doesn't have any real policy. Either he just agrees with everything Biden does but can't say it because he knows Biden's making good moves and he can't improve on it, but he can't say that, right? It's politics. And he doesn't have any ideas or he knows his ideas are so dumb and unpopular because it's just giving more money to rich people and billion dollar businesses that he can't say that either. So he goes on about culture war BS a lot of the time or he talks about water and showers and stuff. And despite that, here's the bootlicking part. And this is still awkward and makes Trump look bad. I, I just refer to it as the art of the deal. And I remember when you appointed me to the NEC and we talked about all this and you said, well, you said to me, I'm a better negotiator than you are. And you were quite right. Absolutely. Did um, I say that? I don't think I, hey, I'm not sure that I said that. You did. And I, took I, it well. I consider you to I, be. I, I took I, it well. I, Reserve currency. Well, I think it's bigger than losing any war. Mm -hmm. I think if it doesn't, uh, look, we are already reverting to third world status in many ways. You look at our airports, you look at our terminals, you look at our filthy roads and broken roads and everything else. We're like a third world country. We have something that's very powerful, and that's our dollar all over. But you take a look at what's happening to it now with other countries not using it. And you know China wants to replace it with mm -hmm. the yuan. Mm -hmm. And it was unthinkable with us unthinkable would never have happened now people are thinking about it that could happen and if that happens that would be one of the worst things to happen to this country in 200 years mm. how would you handle that vis-a-vis -vis china for well, example well i'd say to them look you are trying to destroy the dollar you are trying to take over other countries that now trade in the dollar and they're going to trade into one and that's okay, but if you're going to do that, we're not going to do any business with you whatsoever, and we're going to tariff the hell out of your products, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and 100% I win, 100%, yeah. and they'll leave it alone. And But we can't lose. If we lose the dollar, if we lose that, the value of that, and it's not just symbolic. That's a big deal. Uh, that brings us to a level that I don't think is necessarily recoverable. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, they have 1.4 billion people. India has 1.5 billion people. We have, how many people are coming into our country? We have no idea what it is, but let's say it's 325 million people, 350 million people. We have no idea. You know they have no idea, Larry. Mm -hmm. People are pouring in. Other countries know how many people they have, we don't. But if we're at 350 million, and they're at 1.4 billion, and other ones at 1.5 billion, we have got a, we need some strength, and that gave us tremendous power and tremendous strength. Mm -hmm. But we're losing that. We're losing that power. And if we lose that, mm -hmm. if the dollar no longer is that, you know, blessed event, we are, I think we'd be in serious, serious financial trouble as a country. You know, it, it's just, it's insane. It's insane, guys. These are, this is a pre recorded interview. It's edited. It's clearly a former Trump cabinet minister who still very much loves Donald Trump and is loyal to him. And it still makes him look awful. They took the best parts of this to show us. What do you think they left on the cutting room floor? This isn't like a two hour town hall where you see all of it, the good, the bad and everything in between. This was like a highly choreographed interview. They may have even given Trump the questions in advance, although I can't confirm that. And he still sounds demented. And he goes back to the water stuff, guys. Uh, you'll be able to buy an electric car, but you're going to be able to buy every form of car that's made. You've got to have choice. Like in school, we want school choice. We want we want choice for buying cars mm -hmm. and washing machines mm -hmm. and dry all of this stuff. I mean, the dishwashers, they were telling me, 
you have to run it five times because it hasn't got enough water. So what they do, on, on, on. They end up using more water. I mean, the whole thing is crazy. This- like, I, I, I can't. I know, like, you know, people, you know, they give you want a, a good shower. I get it. But it's just, it's... This is all he talks about. When's the last real policy Donald Trump has pushed that wasn't we're going to be cruel to trans people or we're going to be cruel to LGBT, you know, the other LGBTQ people or we're going to be cruel to immigrants or we're going to be X, Y or Z. When was his last real policy that wasn't shower or dishwasher based? Honestly, can't really think of it off the top of my head. But this is where it goes from just regular Trump bad to terrible. He sounds awful in this video and people are making the Mitch McConnell comparisons. Full subpoena power because of the freedom of speech sham indictment by crooked Joe Biden deranged Jack Smith and the DOJ. It has just been reported that the unselect January 6th committee, they are unselect indeed, of political hacks and thugs has illegally destroyed all of their records and their documents. So they took all of their records, all of their documents, they reported it, tried to get me indicted, and probably did, and then they destroyed everything. This is unthinkable, and the fake political indictment against me must be immediately withdrawn. The system is rigged and corrupt, very much like the presidential election of 2020, and we have plenty of proof on that. We are a nation in decline, but we'll turn it around. We have no choice. Everyone noticed that. Other big YouTube creators noticed it. Um, I think Brian Tyler Cohen posted that this was very, very disturbing. And it is. He is kind of stroking out there. It's one of the worst Donald Trump's ever sounded. Again, say what you will about this man. If nothing else, his health, his ability to make it to 2028, is seriously in doubt. People have concerns about Biden and his age, not without some reason, but Donald Trump is far sicker, even though he's a little bit younger.